In this video, I'm going to be going over some of the basics of what a kernel is. I will go over what a kernel is and the different types of kernels, and I will go into some details, but for some of the terms I'll use, it would be better to go and look up uh, the terms to get a little bit more information and to get a little bit more into detail. Uh, but what is a kernel? A uh, kernel is a computer is a computer program that manages the I/O requests from software and translate the requests into CPU instructions or other electronic instructions for a computer. Uh, think of it as the middleman for the software and the hardware. It acts as an interface between the user applications and the hardware. Its main task is to manage communication between the software and the hardware. Electronic instructions are communications with semiconductors, diodes, transistors, integrated circuits, and more on the motherboard. So uh, does it play a part in an operating system, and are they specific to the hardware? So the kernel is a central part, is the central part of the operating system uh, that directly controls the computer hardware. The kernel is the first of the user installed software on a computer, booting directly after the BIOS. Um, operating system kernels are specific to the hardware on which they are running. Uh, thus, most operating systems are distributed with different kernel options that are configured when the system is installed. Think of Windows XP as, uh, well, Windows XP enough as the HAL version that you install on the machine, the HAL.dll file. Uh, thus, a custom uh, operating system that is written for custom hardware uh, would only need one uh, one kernel type. Um, when you look at Windows, you will see that they have written it the the how, which is the hardware extraction layer, uh, to be able to run on a wide range of hardware, which was the intention of Windows since the NT kernel was started. They wanted, they wanted to have an operating system that would run on your desktop, your laptop, phone, or your tablet. So major OS kernels, which the two major OS kernels are Windows and Unix-like, or Unix. Uh, the Windows kernel is proprietary software written and distributed by Microsoft. This was first used in Microsoft 386 all the way up to Windows 8 since the time of this recording. Uh, many of its uh, functions were placed in user mode for stability and security. Unix-like is a series of kernels that are based on Bell Labs Unix uh, operating system. Some examples are Linux, BSD, Mac OS X, which uses Darwin, which is based on Unix, and uh, other Unix-like operating system, and this is not proprietary. So how? Uh, the system calls. Uh, when a software makes a request to the CPU, this is called a system call. Depending on the kernel, the CPU will handle these calls differently. Uh, an example would be uh, they handle these calls depending on the kernel, for example, time sharing. Uh, in which the kernel gives X amount of time for each process or daemons. Uh, or Novell used a kernel that would hand over uh, calls to an application that requested it, and when that was done, it would hand it back over. Uh, of course, you can see the problem with that, as if you had a bad programmer or a malicious programmer, they could take control and not hand it back over, or just take too long, and thus making all other services or applications um, run much slower. So there are three main categories, each having subcategories, uh, the monolithic, uh, microkernel, and hybrid. So monolithic kernel, with this type of kernel, the entire operating system is working in kernel space and is alone in supervisor mode. Uh, monolithic kernels run both applications and drivers in kernel space, uh, processing memory, memory management, I.O. handling, device drivers, file system, virtual memory, etc., are all in single module in a uh, single module in kernel space, the OS is in user mode. Uh, the kernel space is reserved for running privileged kernel and uh, kernel extensions and device drivers. Uh, having them in a single module was bad because if you needed to change anything, for example, the file system, you needed to recompile the entire kernel, which could take hours. Uh, modern monolithic kernels have fixed this by breaking them into their own modules. Uh, the application talks to the kernel, then the kernel passes that onto hardware. Uh, so microkernels or Samuel kernel. Uh, this is a near minimum amount of software in order to implement an OS. This covers low-level address space management, 
uh, Threat Management and IPC. This was made in the 1980s to combat the increasing size of kernels. Uh, this allows device drivers, file systems, protocol stack, and others to run in user space. This reduces the kernel size. These kernels are usually about 10,000 lines of code. This is not the smallest kernel. Uh, Exo kernel and Nano kernel and Minix kernels are smaller at about 6,000 lines of or less. Uh, IPC or inter-process communication is a mechanism that allows one process to communicate with another by sending messages comprising zeros or zero or more bytes, uh, complex data structures, or even segments of code. Uh, IPC, virtual memory, and process scheduling are in kernel mode in uh, microkernels. So a hybrid kernel, um, it is a combination of two. Um, uh, the ideal behind it and who uses it, I'll, I'll cover that. Uh, this is a combination of two kernels, monolithic and micro. This is still considered monolithic to some people, but it is laid out differently so it's not really the same thing, at least to me it's not, uh, but it, to each their own. Um, the idea behind it is the OS serves, services are in kernel space. There is no message passing, no performance overhead, and no reliability benefits of having services in user space. This is used by Microsoft's NT kernel that powers all of their NT OSs all the way up to Windows 8 at the time of this recording. So. That's all I really wanted to cover in this video so far. This is just a basic rundown of uh, kernels. Uh, maybe in another video I'll pick a specific OS and uh, pick apart the kernel and you know talk about what it does. But uh, thank you for watching and uh, check out the other videos that I have under this channel. All right, thanks.